I'm Mark, this is my garage. Today we're going to change the engine oil in a SNS 117. We're going to change the transmission fluid in a Baker 6 speed, and we're going to change the primary fluid in a Baker DSSC primary. Use this information at your own risk, I assume no liability. We're going to take this out to warm it up about 20 minutes on the highway, get the gear sifting, get the RPMs up. Two things before I ride. Number one, I let it warm up for at least two minutes. These cylinder tops should be at least warm to the touch. And that's why I know that the bike's warmed up. The other thing is I wear all the gear all the time. I've been in a couple violent accidents. Uh, the scarf for the neck, okay, full, full helmet, uh, back brace. Definitely gloves. If you look at these gloves here, I couldn't imagine if that was my knuckle scraping on the uh, on the asphalt. Go ahead and loosen the fill bolt because when I take the fill bolt out, this is a 3 8 inch, and this is the transmission fill bolt. It'll help the, uh, the draining go faster. It doesn't really matter what order you do these fluids in, but we're gonna do the transmission drain first, only because before I do the fluid changes, I check the bolts, the drain bolts especially, to see if there's any stripping. Because if there is, then I'll, dry, I'll buy new drain plugs to have them on hand because I don't wanna put a stripped drain plug back. Uh, in my case, I noticed that the transmission bolt is slightly stripped. Uh, but not so stripped that I couldn't fit one of these uh, Home Depot uh, notched Allen keys in there. You see that? And if you go there, they've been, they've been selling these for a while. Um, and they specifically say that it more easily fits into stripped Allen heads. So you, you would first try this. It's good to have a set on hand. If, this does, if it's so stripped that you can't even fit this in, then you could put a, star, uh, a Torx bit uh, or a star bit in there hammer it in or pry it in there somehow just to get the drain bolt loose and then uh, obviously replace the drain plug. Getting to the transmission drain plug kind of sucks. So I'm going to start with the nose cone. We're going to follow the exhaust down here. All right, so we're going to go under the bike, right? And right there, if, can, if you follow my Allen wrench, is the transmission drain bolt. So as I back up over here, that's where it was. All right, so where it's about to come out, so I got my catch pan under here. Notice I don't use a regular catch pan because a regular catch pan is not going to fit under here. All right, so before we drain the engine oil, we're going to uh, loosen up the engine fill plug. to let it drain a little bit more smoothly. So while the transmission fluid is draining, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the engine oil drain bolt. So let's uh, first show you where it is. Here is the, uh, the rear passenger foot peg, and we're gonna go down, okay, by the kickstand, and underneath here, you see there are uh, the shocks. This is actually a soft tail. And in between these shocks towards the back, right, and up in here between these wires, you'll see a bolt. Okay, so if you follow my Allen, I'm gonna get it up into that, that bolt there. So this is the best angle I can get on this bolt. If you look at that rear shock on the uh, left side of the kickstand side you go down by the kickstand there's that 
back part of the frame with the bolt where it bolts into and right at that edge it's again really hard to get to that is your engine oil drain plug if you're thinking this is the worst possible place to put a drain bolt you're probably right it's very inconvenient uh, I've tried to get a socket up there and to no avail because I have to use my camera to see where the bolt is from the bottom. And so the, the easiest thing to get in there is this, uh, this regular handheld Allen. But sometimes it's too tight, so the trick I use is just to use a plier for the initial couple turns just to get some extra leverage on it. Once I've got it turning, then I can just finish off by using my hand. We finally got her out. We're going to let her drain. And take off the inspection cover where we're going to fill the new fluid. Here's a look inside the inspection cover. You can see the chain there. And all the primary fluid does is lube the chain. Primary drain bolt, fall the derby cover down, and you can kind of see under here where it is. Um, it takes a 3 16 Allen like the other drain bolts. They're all the drain bolts are the same. Let's crack it open. And on the Harley primaries, sometimes they take a Torx screw though. Now we're just going to go ahead and pull the drain plug from the primary. Let that drain out. Put back the, uh, the engine oil drain plug. Uh, before I put the drain plug back, I'm going to put on some uh, liquid Teflon. I typically like the, uh, the squirting kind more so than this paste kind, but this tends to do the job good enough. I just put a little bit on there uh, as opposed to the actual tape because the tape would tend to flake off and possibly get into your engine. But we have that very light coating around there, right there. I'm going to replace the bolt with the liquid Teflon on it, and that would go for all three bolts. We're going to replace the, uh, the drain bolt for the transmission, put a little bit of liquid Teflon on there just to kind of seal up the, the leaking and finger tight at first and then eventually I'll cinch it up a little bit more but typically I don't like to get it too tight I just like to snug it up then if I do see a drip or a leak I'll just tighten it up a little bit further your oil filter in the front. Uh, this is the same with pretty much all the V-Twins, uh, including the Harleys. And I'm just, I, I typically just hand tighten it. Again, I'll notice leaks here, and if I need to tighten it more, I'll tighten it more. But for those of you who may have it on real tight from either a previous owner or a dealer, here's a trick I use to, uh, to loosen it. I'll take something cloth lights, because a lot of times you'll have a nice chrome filter in there. Uh, Mine is reusable, so I don't want to damage it. If you have a one-use filter, you don't have to worry about this. And I'll just get a large pair of channel locks, right? And I'll be up here. And I can grab it as such. Increase this a little bit. I'll grab that filter as such. I don't want to squeeze too hard. I want to look at this side of the filter where it compares to uh, the housing, you know, and see I barely want to put enough pressure just to get it to move Okay, because I don't want to squash my filter accidentally. So I'll go ahead and look at that for comparison Turn this and as, as soon as I see it moving That's as much pressure as I'm going to use The other thing I do just to catch some oil to leave it less messy here in this area I'm just gonna have to shine it up again. Is I cut this two liter bottle and look at the angle I cut it like so, and it'll slip right under here, nice and snug, so that when I do take this filter off, that's the point where it comes off. The oil is gonna, the remaining oil is gonna drain in here. So I'll loosen it until that point, all right, and then we're gonna watch as the oil drains into the bottle. I use a reusable oil filter again because I ride so much it's easier for me to just change it out. Plus I just I don't like to 
throw out all that chrome, but if you're really changing this once a season or twice a season, it's probably going to be a lot more convenient for you to use a uh, disposable oil filter. But the reusable ones, these are this is a uh, sift on oil filter. I'm going to punch it in here, take it out. We got to clean that. I'm going to clean the spring in here as well. So initially, what I do is I'm just going to spray a little bit of brake cleaner on this. Wear goggles when you anytime you use brake cleaner, by the way. You see it's getting a lot of crud out of there, right? All that old crud is coming out. Alright. And after the brake cleaner, let's give it some dawn. So toss that in here. Same thing with this. The spring mechanism. Clean that out. Same thing with the spring mechanism, clean that out. And then, of course, the housing itself. And toss it in here. Now, I'll just apply a little bit of water. A little bit of Dawn. Maybe a little more. I'm just going to let it soak. All our drain bolts are put back in. We've snugged them all up with liquid Teflon. And I've got a funnel that's clearly labeled oil transmission primary so that we know not to put anything else in there. And this takes, again, 22 to 24 ounces. Uh, this is the brand I uh, got this time. Uh, 75 140 is the main thing you want to remember full synthetic uh, it's made for six speeds which this is and the 22 ounces is about roughly halfway up here 22 24 so i'm going to pour about the 22 first check the dipstick level and then we're going to pour as needed transmission fluid has been filled up check the lines it's at the top the max if the, this fluid is so clear that what I ha typically have to do is I have to roll it on my finger like this because I can't tell on a, on a towel or anything because that's how clear the fluid is. Now we're just going to put back the drain plug. Now we're going to fill up the uh, primary again. Use that clean funnel. Just take it right there in the inspection cover. And because it's leaning over this way, even with the wood block, it's going to help to have a buddy lean it back over just so that you get that full 32 ounces in there. So he's just going to lean the bike. And that's plenty. And we're just going to pour that in there. Uh, I like to change this gasket every so often as well. And so we're done with the primary fluid itself. So put the cover back on here. Gasket first. And then cover. All right. So we get that in place. There's only one way it can go, which is good. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our bolts in. These corners are susceptible to breaking, so you wanna tighten them in a, in a cross pattern. So again, I just wanna snug them up. I don't over tighten. If I notice a leak, I'll, I'll tighten a little bit more. So one, two, three, in such a cross pattern. You can see the oil has separated, the Dawn has separated the oil from the components already. I'm gonna give it one more polish. See all that oil in there? After the, I took it out of the Dawn, I went in and I cleaned it, you know, with a rag. So now there's a, there's a very clean oil filter right here. Punch it back in. Bam, we're ready to go. All right, and as always, car, motorcycle, whatever. Uh, and take a very thin coating of new oil just around the gasket to help it come off the next time a little bit better. That's it. I'm just gonna spin this bad boy back on. Funnel. 
fill hole under the seat, three quarts, and here goes quart one. We filled up our three quarts. You can see at the very bottom of that uh, fill neck where the bend is, there's oil. If, you, if there wasn't oil there, you would see a rod there and it would be exposed and just add a little bit more. Tighten up our filler cap nut and we're good to go. These pans of oil, we just dump them in here, seal it up. These jugs are pretty cheap, they're like just a couple dollars. And you can take this in any Advance or AutoZone, and they have a big vat in the back where they just let you dump it for free and you reuse the container. Thanks for watching.